which is being broadcast from Gloucester Cathedral. The canticles will be sung to Amner's second service, and the anthem is Exultate Deo by Samuel Wesley.
here beginneth the fourth verse of the second chapter of the book of the prophet Jeremiah. <clears throat> Hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, What iniquity have your fathers found in me, that they are gone far from me, and have walked after vanity, and are become vain? Neither said they, Where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, that led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and of pits, through a land of drought and of the shadow of death, through a land that no man passed through and where no man dwelt. And I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. But when ye entered, ye defiled my land and made mine heritage an abomination. The priests said not, Where is the Lord? And they that handle the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal, and walked after things that do not profit. Wherefore, I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. For pass over the isles of Chittim and see, and send unto Kedar, and consider diligently, and see if there be such a thing. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid, be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. Here endeth the first lesson. Thank you. 
Here beginneth the fifth verse of the second chapter of the second epistle of Paul to the Corinthians. There has been discord and strife in the church in Corinth. Paul writes to re-establish harmony based on mutual forgiveness. Any injury that has been done has not been done to me. To some extent, not to labour the point, it has been done to you all. The penalty on which the general meeting has agreed has met the offence well enough. Something very different is called for now. You must forgive the offender and put heart into him. The man's sorrow must not be made so severe as to overwhelm him. I urge you therefore to assure him of your love for him by a formal act. I wrote, I may say, to see how you stood the test, whether you fully accepted my authority. But anyone who has your forgiveness has mine also. And when I speak of forgiving, so far as there is anything for me to forgive, I mean that as the representative of Christ, I have forgiven him for your sake. For Satan must not be allowed to get the better of us. We know his wiles all too well. Then when I came to Troas, where I was to preach the gospel of Christ, and where an opening awaited me for the Lord's work, I still found no relief of mind, for my colleague Titus was not there to meet me. So I took leave of the people there and went to Macedonia. But thanks be to God, who continually leads us about, captives in Christ's triumphal procession, and everywhere uses us to reveal and spread abroad the fragrance of the knowledge of himself. We are indeed the incense offered by Christ to God, both for those who are on the way to salvation and for those who are on the way to perdition. To the latter it is a deadly fume that kills, to the former a vital fragrance that brings life. Who is equal to such a calling? At least we do not go hawking the word of God about as so many do. When we declare the word we do it in sincerity, as from God and in God's sight, as members of Christ. Here endeth the second lesson.
I believe in God. favorably to hear the prayers of thy people, that we who are justly punished for our offenses may be mercifully delivered by thy goodness for the glory of thy name through Jesus Christ our Saviour, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, 
Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. in our darkness we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The anthem is Exaltate Deo, and the music is by Samuel Wesley.
Let us pray for our Queen and all who are set in authority under her, and all those who serve in her forces. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless our Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth, the parliaments in all her dominions and all who are set in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom, righteousness and peace, to the honour of thy holy name and the good of thy church and people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all who bear the responsibility of leadership within our nation. O Lord, we pray thee to raise up leaders of the people who will fear thee and thee alone, whose delight shall be to do thy will and work thy work that the hearts of the, this people may be wise, its mind sound, and its will righteous, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In our daily prayer for the parishes in this our Diocese of Gloucester, we pray today for Sandhurst with Edward Jackson, its priest in charge. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone workest great marvels, Send down upon our bishops and curates all co and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honour of our Advocate and Mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest upon you and upon all your work and worship done in his name. May he give light to guide you, courage to support you, and love to unite you, now and forevermore. This week's choral evensong was broadcast from Gloucester Cathedral. The organist and master of the choristers was John Sanders and the assistant organist John Clough.